We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K., live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. <laughs> I yeah, I you know what I'm loving it too. It's 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 great music for the Christmas. I wanted to do something special. And we've got Nick Inkin t- with us today and he is a an all-around well-known established professional uh American fencer, right-handed. Uh you know, uh fencer and uh yeah. It, it, we've gotten a lot of great feedback. My good my Oh my God. Thank you to my team. I love you guys. Thank you to Christina. Uh, this is exciting. It really, really is. Um, uh, we had Andrew on not too long ago. Great guy. Andrew Miskevich. Awesome. I mean, these young, young Gen Z, they're changing the world. Literally changing the world. Have you any, it takes the youth to do that. All right. Even though I'm going to be 49, in April, I'm really excited. I'm telling you, I'm not rushing my life. I'm being very serious. I'm not rushing my life, but I'm looking forward to my 50s. You want to know why? Because I look really darn good for 48, going to be 49 soon. And I just, it seems like people change and they've got, I don't know, men in their 50s. It seems like they get this chiseled kind of. Uh, gladiator type of look and you all know I'm, I'm Italian Sicilian Puerto Rican Brazilian I was adopted by a German family but I like the fact that I've got that that Mediterranean you know kind of look to me some people some people ask me if I'm Jewish they ask me if I'm Middle Eastern they ask me you know I get mostly Italian or, or uh, Portuguese or something but I like to say I, I really am looking forward I think in my 50s I'm going to start having that Mediterranean look that nice chiseled statue look and i'm taking my body to a whole other level so you know you know nick is what 23 you know those guys in the 20s they're gonna have the chiseled bodies you know i i had one just like nick and and andrew miskevich you know nice lean cut abs could eat whatever i want pizza little debbie's tasty cake (laughs) <laughs> you know, sugar did not affect me in my 20s. It gave me more energy, but there, there was no such thing as fat on my body. And I didn't have to work hard, honestly, to keep it off. Um, but yeah, how how excited. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to 2023. The resiliency with young people um, and, and even my generation, Gen X, being an 80s kid. It's really, really awesome to see how people have really decided to take the power of their own life in their hands to make really, really great decisions. And for those in the White House and everywhere else, remember, you were young at one time too. I highly doubt you did everything that you think is so perfect now back then. God only knows you probably have a juvenile record that we'll never know about because, you know, we know what happens with juvenile records, you know, it's non-existent once you turn 18 it's kept you know under the table god only knows what other criminal activities or blowing up firecrackers in people's houses i know back in the 80s uh halloween time mischief night uh we uh, so i didn't ever do it i'm not confessing something i have no problem confessing if i did it but i know other people who did it and they did it for two reasons either mischief night or if you pissed them off they would put dog or cat shit in a paper bag and burn it on your porch <laughs> so with that being said uh 
there's no what I really really appreciate with the younger generation. It's there's no fluff, no air. There there's no like trying to paint this shellacked identity of uh, you know perfection. They are who they are, and I really would love to see. And I and I'm strongly suggesting this, and I say to every young person. Let's start getting more young people in the White House, in Congress. Uh, I don't feel that we need an elderly person to try to prove responsibility and leadership when anyone at any age, even a child at five years old, has got more common sense nowadays than people my own age and people older than me. So with that, you know, if Andrew Miscavige or, you know, uh, Nick Itkin ever decided they want to get into politics or they want to do something, they're getting my vote. They're getting my vote. No questions asked. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Soon to be happy new year. Uh, You know, 2022 has been a very interesting year, but you are what you make of it. You only can control and do so much for what you have and what you can do. But at the same time, you've got two choices, and it's easier said than done. But it's so true, and I've, I've recently gone through this. Uh, I had a moment yesterday. You can either retain and reclaim your own power and how you choose to respond or react to things and people and situations, or you can give someone power, possession, and control over you to be able to take control of how you handle things in life. So remember that moving forward for the year end and into next year. And if you're like, oh my God, I don't feel like going back home for the holidays. Well, then don't. Go take yourself on a vacation. Oh my God, you know what? I haven't heard from my family and friends all year long. And now I'm thinking like I'm going to be spending like a couple hundred to a, a thousand or so dollars. Don't. Buy yourself a Christmas gift. I bought myself one. I do it every year. I buy myself at least one Christmas gift for all the hard work I did all year long. So with that being said, you never have to do what you don't want to do. And if you're in a position where you're going home and around your friends and family and you're buying gifts because somebody told you that that's what you do to prove your love for someone, well, then I encourage you to answer this question. Where were they all year long before Christmas? Where were they around your birthday? Did anybody pay for your plane ticket first class to come home? Don't tell me, coach. Did they pay a first class ticket for you to come home? Because I would pay for my dad first class wherever he needs to go. I will never put my dad in coach. So someone really cares. You don't need to use money and gifts to prove that because then that just means you're going to get a 24-hour, 48-hour moment of self-narcissistic gratification And then you're going to go on for the rest of the year into next year being totally forgotten. So the choice is yours. Do we have anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, George Krista. Yeah, check that out. It's available now. Amazon Audible, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Remember, Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco is a radio show. We just love to utilize those podcast channels for SEO purposes. So when people go in like today, when people go Google search Nick Itkin, they're going to be able to pull them up on those channels and listen to it at any time. Whether you're listening to Power 98.5 on the iOS or Android app, we are also available on Alexa and Power985.com. Take it everywhere with you. We are a commercial free radio station. We are about the people for the people. That's how I created it. Uh, why I created it and uh, and have it as I, I want it to be more content, not all gibble gabble talk to try to sell you something. I, I have no desire to sell you on anything. I want to encourage and enlighten you, not sell you anything. Uh, click the bottom icon in the right hand corner that that type of purplish magenta. I have no idea what color that is. I like it. I was asked, do you like? It? I was like, yeah, it stands out. I don't want something you know traditional. Send us a direct instant message, whether you're, you know, you're on the iOS or Android app or even on a website, power985.com. You can message me and my team live anytime, 24-7. Uh, we are an interactive satellite radio station. There is always someone there. You don't have to just email us. There is a 24-7 operational instant message 
live where you where you will either talk to myself or you'll talk to Christine or Christina will be there. Like someone will be there. Uh, you know, you don't need a. There's no need for you to contact tech support or anything else. We we don't operate like other stations. You know, we're not serious or iHeart. You don't need an email. You don't need a phone number. It is free. You don't need to put in any of your credentials. And it's really the best way of how radio should be. Commercial free, music, people, community, and and really just really being uh, forward moving and, and inspiring. We just recently add, was it, it was uh, over 50? Yeah, 50 new songs this month <laughs> we got some more coming in uh anything else happening now yeah garrett alexander watson actor he was just on december 18th his his show is available now we've got a promo clip coming out very soon about that you can always go to power985.com or on the app check out our schedule just click on live radio and it is right there. We also are adding articles to the station now, too. So we just did one with Tom Pagliarulo. Uh, just a quick little snippet. Click tap on a photo, and I'll take you right to his show. So we're, we've incorporated that as well. So you don't have to search around. Just like with Nick's interview today, we're going to put a little article in there. We'll have a bio. We're going to add his photo. Tap on a photo. It's going to go right to a show. Uh I don't know. I may want to put, I don't know. Is everybody using Amazon Music? I know I've been doing Spotify. Everybody has Spotify. There was a poll recently done. People prefer Spotify over iTunes. That shocks me. I thought iTunes was was the biggest thing right now or always has been. I, I would never have thought that Spotify would be number one uh, in most people's taste of what they go to, but it is. I and I saw several polls on this. I I really assumed it was going to be iTunes, but it seems like uh, there is actually a bias between people who are Spotify lovers and people who are iTunes lovers. In my opinion, you shouldn't be biased about anything. It's about the music and the people, as long as it builds community and helps you engage and connect to your music taste. I don't need to judge. I'm going to tell you, I love iTunes iTunes is my favorite, not just because I'm an Apple lover, but I love iTunes. I navigate through that easier. But don't get me wrong. I love Spotify as well. I got both accounts. But uh, I'm going to have to say, I don't care who gets upset about it. I go to my iTunes first before I go to anything else. It's what works best for, for the station. Uh, and, and, oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. December 31st, we have uh, uh, Sean Pacino. He's coming up as well. That interview, December 31st, 11 a.m. And I know we're going to wait into the new year. I'm not going to be overbooking. I've got some new contracts coming up. I've got clients with NBC and, and Netflix. So we're going to look into what the new year and how the new year is going to start off and what my schedule is going to be because I, it's been what, two years since this pandemic. I am going to start traveling as of next month. Getting back into traveling for work again in, in PR and media. Super excited. Got this Anheuser-Busch we're working on right now with myself and Jamal Hill. We're finishing things up. And uh, I don't mind putting it out there. We're just finalizing some things with the contract. And you're going to hear a big shout out for me. Uh, once it's signed, we're looking to get this all done because we're supposed to start January, January 1st. And uh, do a media tour with Jamal. We've uh, they're going to be filming a documentary. We've got a lot going on. Uh, another thing, the documentary. I'm coming in as a consultant. Uh, we're having background in film and television of where I want the documentary to go and film festivals. <laughs> what man? Like I told Jamal. You're no longer just in sports. When you are in it, you've got to have your foot in entertainment. Told that Nick and I had that conversation as well. You have to have your foot in entertainment. That's where the big money is. I'm not saying it's not in sports, but you want to make royalties. You want to get good payouts. You know, film and television and commercial is where it's at, especially you get yourself into the independent film world. 
and you start doing South by Southwest and Sundance Film Festival and Santa Fe Independent Film Festival and all those film festivals, you get to meet producers and directors and you got photographers there and some places, Getty photographers, Shutterstock photographers. Like it's a big Hollywood thing. You know, that's it. That's bigger than red carpet. You get yourself into films. You start winning awards. So I'm really excited for Jamal. Uh, we've got a lot of great things looking forward to, to him this coming year. And he's really excited. So, uh, yeah, definitely check out Jamal Hill. All great things in Jamal. You can go to stevencuoco.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O.com. All things uh, public relations, media, uh, my top clients are there. The list is there and people who I've worked with in the past and who I currently work with. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be sharing more. I've got to add more to the Rolodex, um, of who I've taken on as a client for 2022. Woo. I think we've covered everything with that being said, we've got Mr. Nick Inkin. He's an American right-handed foil fencer, two-time NCAA champion, 2022 team Pan American champion and 2021 team Olympic bronze medalist. He won a bronze medal in individual men's foil at the 2022 senior world fencing championships in Cairo, Egypt. One of the places I want to go to most definitely Nick. I know you're going to be adding a lot more to your resume of greatness, not just within fencing, but outside of that. 23 years old, you're already traveling. You've got Paris you're going to be preparing for 2024. What's next? Hey, Steven. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Yeah, very excited to be on here. Definitely looking forward to, to the next Olympics in Paris and, uh, yeah, just uh, getting started in my, my fencing career. You've accomplished a lot, already a bronze medal to me. Uh, thanks to Andrew Miskevich, I told you um, a while back when we chatted, I learned a lot about fencing from him, which this brings so much joy to my heart to be here with you because now I have a better understanding of how to watch it, what to look for, and really to, to understand. And then the video that you and Jamal did, and Jamal's there, and he's got all these electrical wires, and he's like saying, like, this is how you know the, the, the hit points and stuff like that. How did you, why fencing? And how did you excel so quickly at such a young age, at only being 23 and already being, you know, with these awards? Yeah, so I actually have a, pretty unique start to the sport my dad is actually a coach so um yeah my parents are from ukraine and my dad uh was a fencer back in ukraine and then he moved to los angeles and opened up his fencing club in 2003 so i've been fencing since i was like seven or eight years old uh just been like very passionate about it my dad has been working for with me since i was a little kid and yeah i never really until I was about 16, that's when I started getting very competitive and getting a lot of results. And then I went to the University of Notre Dame um, for college and I fenced there. And that really took me to the next level. And since then, I've been training on the senior team and just growing from there. And I really fell in love with the sport. What would you say if someone were to ask? Because honestly, I, for most of my life, knew about fencing. I just didn't understand it, but I believe yeah. that there could be a popularity or I'm assuming there's more of a popularity and an understanding and respect for it. Just like jujitsu, you know, people recognize boxing and MMA, but just jujitsu, it's not a very, um, well established, recognized sport within the mainstream world that I'm in and that I know of, what would you like to share to let people know, to be like, hey, listen, we're we're not like in these uniforms. We're we're not just you know poking one another like this. What sort of training? What sort of skill? What sort of mindset, Nick, is required to be of great excellence for this sport? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think one of the biggest issues in sport is just it's kind of it can be difficult to understand if you've never watched it before or have never done it before. You just turn on the TV and you see fencing like it's so quick and lights are going on and you don't know why this person got a point. 
So that's like, I feel like that's the main problem with why it's not as popular. Um, it's definitely more popular in Europe and Asia. I just think that for people who, who really like want to get into a new sport and be interested in it, you need to like just watch a couple couple videos or just do it one time and it'll seem so much clearer. The sport isn't as complicated as you might as it might seem. And, you know, just like the, the videos you see in movies of like sword fighting and stuff, it's a lot different. You know, the sport is, is definitely not easy. It's very mentally and physically difficult, you know. So it's a lot about thinking about what your opponent's going to do, how you overplay them. And, you know, I, I just I really recommend anyone to, to go out and try it. I, I'm, one of my goals in life is just to grow the sport because I have a lot of love for it. You guys move fast. I mean, really, really fast. Does a person, let's say for myself, do I really need, I'm going to go to one of your matches, one of your mm -hmm. competitions. What would I need to know when I sit down, whether I understand it, somewhat understand it, whether I'm a beginner, intermediate, or, or I, I understand it all. What yeah. would be the best tips for me to be able to not only enjoy the moment of your competition, but to be able to be there that even if I don't know everything, what would I need to look forward to, to be able to embody the experience while I'm sitting there? Because once again, you guys move so lightning fast. It's like score, 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 score within seconds. Yeah. I, as in, a, in Olympic sports, the only thing faster than fencing is uh is shooting so it's definitely a very quick uh very quick sport but basically to make it as simple as possible um there are three different weapons with three different rules but most simple is if you hit the person in the target area you will get a green or red light and that means that you got the point and if you don't get that light you get an off tar if you get a yellow light or something else that means you didn't hit the target and there are different rules about like whose point it is in so there are three weapons there's foil epe and saber and if it's epe it's if you hit you get a point saber the one that uh my friend and your friend andrew does um who's a u.s national olympic member he does saber and that's where you cut and i do foil and that's where you like hit straight so there's three different rules and if you hit the target area a light will go on so as long as you have that you're you're good to 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 watch to watch the sport and have fun and see what it's about. What are the necessary and most important target areas to win a point, and what are the forbidden parts of the body as we're watching so we understand where that's to hit and where it's not supposed to hit and why? Mm -hmm. So for the weapon that I do, it's called foil. The target area is the chest and the back. So if you hit the arms, legs or in the mask then it's not a point but if you hit him or you can only hit him on the chest or the back and the one that andrew does is called saber that one you can hit anywhere above the waist even the arm yes why is there a difference uh there's just different rules for each one uh in saber you you cut more and for mine you hit more and yeah you just choose one as a kid and then you stick to that one mm -hmm. uh and yeah, it's kind of personal preference from there. I've got to ask, I, and, and this is on topic. I, I mm -hmm. wasn't understanding all the Wednesday trends and stuff that's been going on TikTok and everything. And I was mm -hmm. resistant of watching that on Netflix because I am a huge Adams Family, the black and white original <laughs> version, huge, huge fan um, of the show. I watched it diligently as a kid, along with the Munsters and everything else. So I was kind of speculating as to where could they go with this? Like sometimes I'm very cautious about how things are either remade or how they bounce off. But there was a moment where Wednesday was in a challenge and uh, the opponent had, you know, cut her forehead. Can you really become injured from the foil or the saber does it really draw blood like what they portrayed in the wednesday show no I, it, it's it's not like that we have we have gear on uh and it's like you know very very high level gear so you're not going to be able to like cut someone like that uh we have tips at the end of our falls so like you can get like a bruise here and there but 
um and then like there's common injuries with ankles and stuff like that but there's no like cuts like like in the in the show which i definitely am looking forward to watch i gave it two thumbs up on netflix that's how much i like it not, not to watch it then, sure. yeah i d- i take reviews <laughs> very seriously i was actually extremely impressed and I'm looking forward to season season two. I would be shocked if there wasn't. But if you're thinking about watching it, I'm going to tell you, I am extremely persnippity about anything being remade or somebody trying to like take something that was done and let's, you know, like make something out of it. But I was mm-hmm. impressed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I heard good things about the actress. I heard she kills it. Oh, she perfection. I don't want to see a remake of this because it it was so good. It's just so good. She's just so good. And I really think that you're going to enjoy it. And there's only like eight episodes and they're not really that long. I think they're like maybe about 56 minutes or if not less than that. But yeah, the scene where she was uh, fencing and, and to watch that. Um, and I got to ask, you know, once again, I'm, I'm learning Like you, Mm -hmm. what type of moves, like Wednesday, she did like some type of somersault or flip. Like, are you limited to where you need to keep both of your feet on the ground? If you're coming from gymnastics and you're, you're in a world of, you know, fencing, are you allowed to do some incredible, like, uh, you know, Chuck Norris or, um, like, like moves that we would maybe see like in Bruce Lee? Like, is that real? No, no. I mean, it's that's more just like uh, movie fencing and show fencing, which is sick. Uh, there's been a lot of like great movies, you know, with fencing involved, uh, like Zorro and like in James Bond and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, we're on a strip and we're like wired in. There, there aren't any like flips or some assaults or anything like that. Um, you do get off the ground, like when you lunge, when you attack, like there's like a moment of where you're airborne sometimes but no no one's doing clips or anything like that maybe that's what the sport's missing maybe you found the key to honestly i i would like to see more bruce lee type of action into it because for some reason the way i've seen it in film and television it seems to work yeah you're right you know what let's make it happen (laughs) thank you we'll make another weapon with different rules yeah and you and andrew be uh bruce lee moving uh exactly with a little bit of um Oh my God! I can't believe I'm having a brain fart. Uh, John Wick. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, John Wick with the with the with the four with the stick. Yeah, like uh, we'll be called. We'll be doing Nick, Nick, the John Wick Itkin. You know how you guys sometimes have like a yeah. middle nickname. You're gonna be Mr. John yeah. Wick. <laughs> I like that. John Wick with the stick. <laughs> Um, I'm going to play something. We, we've got something here to bring back a memory. This is from USA Fencing. This was, what was it, published on September 21st. Let's go ahead and play it. Have you learned about preparing for the sort of mental repercussions post Olympics and what that looks like? Yeah, I mean, not a lot of people ask about like after Olympics, but yeah, I mean, it actually was a really difficult transition for me because going up to Olympics, I was like, very motivated, like my primary goals, I knew exactly what I needed to do. And then after the Olympics, I was like planning to, you know, get some rest, relax, like enjoy my time with family and friends. And then afterwards, it was kind of difficult to like get back into like that motivation that I had before Olympics. So I feel like I was still going to practice, but like my motivation just wasn't all the way there. And they were just like, I didn't treat my body as well. And there's small things that you were, were doing better before but you you didn't realize that you started slipping after Olympics. So it took me like almost a season to like finally get my motivation 100% back and realize that I wasn't training the way I should be training. So yeah, like it's it's a mental challenge for sure after Olympic Games. So what they said, uh, how did foil fencer, where did it go? How did foil fencer Nick Itkin feel his mental and physical health were impacted after the Tokyo Olympics came to a halt do you want to touch a little bit more on that yeah for sure so uh you're talking about during the pandemic when it got yeah when it got, yeah so we actually had one olympic qualifier left and we were training january and february like really intensively i was actually in really good shape i was really looking forward to it the tournament was actually in anaheim which is like close to i'm in, I'm in la so I was like, I had all my family and friends coming out. Like my, my trainers were there. 
I was like, I felt amazing. And then one week before the tournament is when everything started happening. Everything started closing down. And we, we were getting close to the tournament. We were like, all right, what's going to happen? Like, is this still going to happen? Then all of a sudden, so many countries couldn't get on flights. And the day before the tournament, they canceled it. And then there was like weeks, months where like no one knew what was happening. Like, they, there was rumors that the Olympics were going to get canceled. And everything just turned into like kind of a mess. And I didn't really know, none of us knew what to do with ourselves. Like, do we keep training? Like, do we, like, take a break? So eventually, we we had this time off. And it, like, it was basically the only moment in my life where, like, I didn't, like, I wasn't training as much. Like, I didn't really know what to, to do with myself. I wasn't in school. I took a year off to focus on the Olympics. So, yeah, it was definitely an interesting time period. And, yeah, and I think it, because it took a year off. And then when we came back to Olympic qualifiers, I qualified, uh, and then we finished the Olympics. But there wasn't that many tournaments going into the Olympics. Normally, we have like eight, nine tournaments in the Olympic Games. We just had one tournament in the Olympic Games, and the Olympic Games was with no spectators. So it was a difficult environment to be in, for sure. Not a lot of uh, competition before. And, and yeah, it was an interesting Olympic experience. I'm super grateful for being able to compete in the olympics and i had an amazing opportunity um, a lot of my teammates said that it was a strange olympics compared to like previous times but i still had an amazing time and yeah it was definitely a challenge but i'm just happy that the olympics even got to happen and are you confident paris 2024 like this is going to be on there's not going to be a cancellation or should we not speculate that something couldn't happen I mean, I mean the the way the world is, you never know. But I'm I'm 99. I'm almost positive it's gonna happen. I think that it will definitely happen. Everything's getting ready for it. Um, all the athletes are are training and competing, and I think the world is just like kind of moved on. I agree. I I really agree. I I foresee it as well. And do you feel overall that this has helped you emotionally and mentally to better prepare, especially at such a young age? Uh, you know, because you're you're much more adaptable, and uh, mm-hmm. do you feel that you've got more confidence that no matter what happens in life, you know, within your world or outside of your world, that you are better prepared to maneuver and manage through anything right now to to not have to sit and wait to to be able to go ahead and be like, all right, this is happening. This is what I've learned from the past. And these are the set skills. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go run. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Do you just feel better prepared that if something were to happen and if there would be a roadblock or anything at all, you're you're not going to stand still, that you're going to be able to be like, all right, I'm going to own this. I'm going to uh, to do what I can do to keep myself moving and going and passionate. And you've got better set skills and, um, you know, just techniques and things to be able to know what to do next time. Yeah, uh, definitely, hundred percent. I I think I've grown a lot from that experience. And um, during the Olympic Games and the year before that, I was or in the Olympic Games. I was the youngest American fencer, so I was still like growing and improving my game. Uh, there are other fencers um, like in the world who are like in their thirties and stuff, and they lost a year of fencing, and that's like hurts them a lot more than it would hurt me because. For me, I'm just young and I'm growing. Um, so I, I think I learned a lot from it. And I'm still still growing in the sport. And definitely that that was a mental challenge that I had to go get through. And I think I only learned and grown from it. How long do you want to keep being involved in a world of fencing? What What's the age? Is there an age cutoff? Or can you do this in your 30s and 40s? Uh, I mean, not, I wouldn't say 40s, but in their 30s is like, middle to late 30s is when people um tend to stop but yeah i mean i i have a goal of paris and then los angeles is where i'm where i'm from so i'm born and raised in la and i want to be a part of the the la games and i'm already like talking to organizers and everything and i want to be a huge aspect to help out in any way to make sure the city uh, is prepared and represent my city as long as as well as my country so the la games is in 2028 and then, yeah, from then on, like, we'll see, like, how everything is going. But I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Anything charitable? Do you have your hands involved in anything? Or if not, 
what are your goals to to share it forward later on down a road? Uh, to teach mean, people, like whether are you would you ever like to write a book, or do you want to go on like a little tour? Or do you want to um, yeah. help other kids to teach them about you know health and wellness, not only through fencing, but but through um, that emotional holistic mindset of your own experience of what you went through during a pandemic to help other people better prepare whether they're in sports or not. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I always want to share as much knowledge as I have possible. Like I'm not going to like, uh, add anything. I'm, I'll tell everyone like everything and including in fencing, I'll always help my teammates and, and, and help the sport grow. I love working with children. Like, um, I think like they're going to be the future of the sport and U S fencing is only on the rise. So I'll be like doing clinics and everything and we'll, we'll be helping out. Um, yeah, we did a couple clinics to support, uh, Ukraine, you know, my family is from there. So we're trying to support the fencing team as much as possible. Um, and yeah, definitely just trying to grow the sport and help the future generation. I found you out or found out about you, uh, from Jamal and, uh, mm -hmm. what he was sharing, how did that all come together? And, and, yeah. and, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Jamal's like a friend of mine. We, we actually met, um, after the Olympics, we both got uh bronze in the, in the, in the games. And then we did a thing for, for Delta together in Mexico. And we just like, yeah, we hung out, like we found out we're both from LA, uh, yeah, we just, he like got together and then he messaged me, he's doing like a YouTube account now and he's doing different sports. So he did, uh, I believe karate mm -hmm. or jujitsu, like he did something first and then he just did fencing and he posted his YouTube video and yeah, it was really fun. He's a great guy. Like I think we're going to do more stuff together in the future. He's involved with like LA games as well. Um, I know he's a good friend of your client and good friends with yours as well. Um, yeah. I hope you guys do. I, I enjoyed the videos. I was like, this is a little bit too short. I want to watch a little bit more. It's almost yeah. like a tapas. Yeah, he the 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 short videos on Instagram, he made like a longer one for, for YouTube. They're good. I mean, mm -hmm. they're I mean, you guys are in LA. I'm sure not too far from each other. It works. Yeah, yeah. And here's the reason why what I why I like this. He's in a world of swimming, Olympics and Paralympics. You, you're in, in fencing. It is great to see the cross reference and promotion and collaboration. And more, most importantly, the community, because I have, I don't normally see two or three different worlds of sports coming together in a way of what you and Jamal were doing. It's different. And it's something that I believe would help better with sponsorships. It would help uh, corporate companies and the older people that are there and in operations to see you guys differently than just a commodity or an asset or an investment, you're human beings. And what I love is that you're taking ownership to show your personality, to show the respect and really the appreciation because to put it all together, all of you are athletes, no matter what sport you come from, the equal, um, the understanding is a fact that every one of you can relate to what it means to not live in everyday job, getting paid every week or every other week. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You're putting your all into sponsorships and endorsements and everything else and, and being paid sporadically and, and, you know, differently than most people here in the States. And that could be stress in itself because you are passionate about what you do. You don't do it to try to become rich and famous. Not saying everybody doesn't, but definitely for you and Jamal, you guys do it for the passion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even though we're not the same sport, there's just so many similarities as an athlete. You know, we go through the same thing. Like we have the same, uh, we, we still have tournaments, we have training, we have uh, endorsements and sponsorships. Like there's a lot of similarities there. And yeah, we, going through a sport like where both of us are looking for other ways to make like to 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 promote our our brand or our sport and we have just a lot of similarities and we go through the same things like we're not necessarily like basketball players or something where we have these like crazy contracts just for being good you know so we, we look for other opportunities as well 
Did you ever have a point or time in your life, Nick, where you felt you reached a roadblock within yourself and were unable to see past a, a possible limitation or resistance and you wowed yourself and were like, oh my goodness. Like, I know I can do what I want to do and how I, I plan to do it when I put my mind to it. But was there ever a moment where you really questioned yourself of thinking, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do this or if I can do it, but it turns into your favor? Yeah, I mean, I guess the biggest challenge for me was just making the the, team, the national team because no one really expected me to. I was like, it was 2019. And the senior team has been solidified for like six, seven years. Like that, that team like created a lot of history. They were like first ones to to get a lot of medals, and they won five World Cups in a row. Like they were they were creating history together, and they were all a lot older than me, like late twenties and early thirties. And they had this team that was just together for so long. And I was just a young kid that no one expected like to make a team. And I was just coming off winning a junior world championships, but no one really expected anything to do happen in senior. Normally you have like junior and then you have a few years of senior before you start making results. Um, and even though I didn't really necessarily expect it. I just knew that I, I could do it if I, if I knew it was possible, but I didn't expect it to happen. And I just came off a, a win in the senior world cup. And then that's when everyone was like, Oh shoot, like something's like changing. Like there's like someone, like someone else can make the team now. So yeah, I, I just kind of, kind of in 2019, I kind of changed everything for me. I'm proud of you. I'm really excited. I when they say things for a reason, I'm going to be honest, Nick. That used to upset me. I'm like, what do you mean things for a reason? Are you saying to me that somehow, some way, God, the universe, even myself, like I put something out there for this to happen? But it's true. Um, I got out of my way and realized that. And, and, and I'm sure you've guarantee everybody experiences this, Nick, that when a door does not open, let it stay closed. And when it does open, enjoy it because it really, I'm going to tell you what I've learned, especially within this decade, especially within this last year, Nick, is I stopped forcing and chasing after people and things and potential opportunities when it is not easily fitting like a puzzle piece in the bigger picture for myself. Can you relate? Yeah, hundred um, percent. I think just like your, your drive and your results will speak for itself. Um, like if something's not working, obviously you got to put yourself in that situation. Uh, so like make the opportunity available. Um, but like as you grow and you you improve, like that was that opportunity is going to become available. So as long as you grow like individually, like that opportunity will be that door will eventually become open. I agree. At Paris twenty twenty four, however, uh, we know Christmas, New Year's is coming up. Any big plans or any little plans or anything important that's happening for you or any any learning experiences that have happened you know moving forward into the remaining of 2022 and what do you have to look forward to for 2023 yeah i mean i i'm just i just graduated uh university this year so it's a big change for me now i'm training full time uh we're going to be traveling a lot to training camps and competing and looking forward to Olympic qualifiers coming up soon so yeah i'm i'm just like in full training mode uh being out of school and being an athlete, like I met a lot of really cool people and get introduced to you, Steven, and mm. other meeting people like Jamal, like just a lot of cool opportunities in the sport. Well, you know, I'm always here for you. You know, the conversation we had of what I like to see, especially in the world of fencing that most definitely should happen when it comes to endorsements and sponsorships for you and Andrew and, and things that, you know, I'm working on for Jamal. Uh, once again, you guys are human beings. You're passionate about what you do, and you're more than a, a, a gamble. You know, you're more than a bet. You're more than you know a sponsorship or anything else. You're out there doing incredible things in the world and and creating a, a path from your own learning experiences to help somebody else to make their life easier because you're holding the education and the experience and knowledge. And with that every day, 
consciously or subconsciously, someone else is learning from you. I'm not in the world of fencing. I don't compete. I have a new we gotta found, that happen to change it. Yeah. I have a newfound appreciation for it because yeah. you gifted me, you guys gift me the opportunity to be able to see something in a way that I was not able to see it and understand it before. Yeah, hundred percent. Steven, you know, you know, two front fencers now. I think it's, it's time for you to, to come try it out sometime. <laughs> what you mean, do like a video with you, like you and Jamal did? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Don't think I won't take you up on that offer. I am. I think that would. So, so how? What would happen? You got a suit? Like, where would I get my suit? Where, like, where would? How would we do uh, this? Well, me, me, and, me and Angie will take care of it. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm. I. I'm. I want to do it. I. I want to thank you for that. Hundred percent, anytime. That's that's a a great idea, and and Andrew, if you're listening, um, I know you didn't think of that. I'm glad Nick did, but don't worry, no need to apologize. Nick took care of all. <laughs> <laughs> he took care of it. Now I'm I'm game. I'm I'm. I I like learning, and I'm at an age where. Learning is so essential. I had my days in, in my 20s and such to where, you know, I, I love education, Nick. But now it's really the quality of life. Quality of life has always been important. But I, I'm going to honestly say, you know, it's it's a real blessing to see how you, being so very young, how you take such great value when it comes to the quality of your life and what that means of the quality of life of the people that are around you. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Steven, you're you're a young man too as well. I know your drive, you're working, you're grinding. I know, I know you still got that young, young man. You're still young. But yeah, uh, definitely quality of life is really important. You know, it's all about balance. Uh, we're training, training a lot. And if you're just training 24 seven, you know, your mind can just go to like, to strange places. You gotta like, Make sure you're taking care of your, your mental health as well, for sure. And treat the people around you well, because in a sport, like you have ups and downs and you need people around you um, through, through, all, through all situations, not just when you're doing well. I'm looking forward to learning more from you. And what was your uh, study? What did you get a degree in? Uh, I studied political science and then minor in economics. You plan on doing something with it? Um. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe in the future, um, after after sport, I think, or if there's any opportunities. I, when I first came into school, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I was thinking of maybe going into law or something, but I knew that that's not where, I don't, not not what I want to do anymore. But yeah, I, we'll see um, in the future. Yeah, it's already laid out for you, and I almost was going to go and become a, a prosecutor. I wanted to become an attorney and then a prosecutor in New Jersey. And I chose PR. So whatever you're looking for, it's out there. I'm not worried for you. Um, God's got you taken care of. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I think you. We 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 uh we have when we grow older, we we start to realize our interests and what we're passionate about. Who would you like to give a shout out to, Nick? Um, just I'll shout out my fencing club, Los Angeles International Fencing Center. Um, yeah, I've been. Since I moved back from school, I've been there every day. That's like my family. So uh, they've been helping me get back ready with my with my coaches. Um, of course, my dad, uh, my coach, Igor Zapozdaya, for sure. And Nerd Aim Fencing. Um, my coach is there and, and all the students there. Like, you guys helped me become the fencer and person I am today, for sure. All great things. Nick Itkin. You can go to his Instagram at Nick, N-I-C-K underscore I T K I N. Is that your main go to social? Is uh, Instagram or do you have other ones? Yeah, yeah that's that. That'll be the main one. Uh, yeah, you can see me on Twitter and Facebook as well. Awesome. Well, it's great having you today. Looking forward to having you on again. Uh, stay on the line and uh, I'll, uh, uh, once we get off the live, uh, I'll we'll have like a little a little quick conversation and then be on with our day. And I appreciate you definitely taking the time for, you know, around the holidays that, you know, you didn't stop your life and be like, Oh no, Christmas is here. No, we were able to get you on uh, what yeah, two days yeah. before. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any closing thoughts? 
Um, no, that's it. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays, Stephen. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you to everyone for joining Nick Itkin and myself live on air with Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Once again, all great things, Nick Itkin. You can go to his Instagram at N I C K underscore I T K I N. Nick is an American right handed foil fencer, two time NCAA champion, 2022 team Pan American champion, and 2021 team Olympic bronze medalist. He won a bronze medal in individual men's foil at the 2022 Senior World Fencing Championships in Cairo, Egypt, one of the places I want to go. And actually, I want to bring it back on Nick. Cairo yeah. is a place, I, and I'm. it reminds me of the days of um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Is it a magical place to visit? What are your thoughts on Cairo? 100%. Uh, first of all, the people are like so generous. Like everyone there was like making sure everything was like taken care of for us. But yeah, the, the pyramids is, is something to experience. Like not a lot of people get to see that it's it's you know it, it's crazy to look at even in the photos it's just like it's different it's huge and it makes you think how they how you know how that happened how they created it but yeah i would definitely recommend it the driving is also insane to look they have like very little street lights so the driving is like million cars in the road like traveling around each other it's like it's uh it's it's a unique experience for sure <laughs> did this scare you at all <laughs> oh yeah for sure they were like driving and they use they don't use blinkers they just like honk at each other to get in that was like one of the weirdest you don't expect that from Cairo but that was definitely a huge part of it was the driving it's uh, it's uh, it, I tell you it's great to hear these experiences when you go to a place that's nothing like the United States <laughs> exactly I'm wondering if it's like fun for us to leave to go there or they find it fun to come here you know is it because you know we have I don't know, seemingly more structure, if you want to call it that, but for you to tell me about the lights. And I watched uh, a movie recently on Netflix and, you know, just like you described out there in Cairo, like I've heard, like there are countries that are like that. They just, they don't drive the way we do. Yeah. If you can drive there, then you can, you can drive anywhere. You can drive here. No problem. So you're telling me someone who drives in Cairo could make somebody from New York City look like they're driving Miss Daisy. Exactly. <laughs> That's insane. That's so insane. All right, I got to get that experience. Thank you for that. Wow. Oh. Yeah, Nick Itkin, everyone. Head on over to his Instagram, Nick underscore Itkin, N-I-C-K underscore I-T-K-I-N. And if you're ever thought of going to Cairo you heard it from Nick it would be a great adventure and and honestly it's 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 great to see the world through different lenses and it really helps open up the mind and also most importantly uh could help you appreciate your life even more uh, especially knowing the luxuries that we have here living in the States. Merry Christmas everyone this is our last interview uh for the year um, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is the last interview for the holidays. Uh, we do have one more coming up on December 31st. Uh, we will have uh, more information as we approach that. Uh, but right now, uh, what a great way to end the year. Um, I am highlighting this uh, episode with Nick Itkin um, as the uh, year-end finale of Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. Um, I'm going to consider the December 31st more of a uh, going into our new year for 2023. So that interview is going to be the, uh, the introduction to 2023. This has been a great, great 2022. Uh, so excited. Looking forward to Jamal and I once again. Uh, you know, I usually don't uh, put things out there until they're finalized, but I'm super excited and most importantly, grateful for the opportunity that we've got on the table with Anheuser-Busch, uh, you know, Jamal with the, uh, filming, the documentary, uh, the film festivals and the mini tour. So we will be touring and I'm going to be having all that information for you. And we're going to be uh, highlighting that on power 98.5, not just on my show, but on power 98.5, uh, 
we've got January, we've got February, I believe we've got April, and then we've got something in May. I got a double check from March, but either way, uh, Jamal and I are to be together uh, every month. Uh, for this mini tour and then the documentary and everything else coming up. It's going to be super excited. I'm going to tell you, I've never worked with an, a, an athlete whose schedule, and I say this all the time to everyone because it just highly impresses me. He His schedule is like a, a politician. Literally, don't be surprised if Jamal doesn't end up in politics. I mean, he's been awarded by the UN. He's meeting uh, uh, royalty in other countries. He's inspiring other people and, and even uh, with the UN uh, to teach millions of people how to swim to prevent drowning. He taught actor Terry Crews how to swim. Uh, Terry just talked about this live in front of millions of people on the, the James Corbin show. Uh, so, so, I mean, stay tuned because uh, if you thought uh, Obama <laughs> or anybody else was a, a big to do. Uh, Jamal is it, the, uh, especially in the world of sports, in a world of swimming. No one is doing what Jamal is doing, and I'm not taking that away from anyone else. I am extremely proud of him, extremely proud of him. And not just that, um, the, the the people who he's educating, not just, you know, through swim uphill and swimming, but also what he plans on doing and, and, and his mission to save people's lives, children, you know, how many times, you know, I had a traumatic experience when I was younger, uh, with water and it changed the way in my relationship with water. And um, I've healed a lot. I actually taught myself how to swim. I just watched other people and I forced myself to learn and get in there and face those fears. But I told Jamal that there is, you know, um, there are still a couple conscious fears that I have being in water. I will not go in water. I don't see my feet in. <laughs> uh, so forget it. I, no matter how wonderful my relationship is with water, if I don't see my feet, I'm not going in, I'm not touching it. Um, if I don't have to, but, um, I'm looking forward to working with Jamal, uh, personally on that and to, uh, reclaim my life and get my complete power back with that. Cause I, I really do enjoy water and swimming and, and, uh, anytime I'm flying, I always pray to God, get us past this water real quick. I don't care if that water's cold or warm. I don't care if it's something, if we're flying over water in Fiji do not stay that long over water. I just don't want to <laughs> not to be putting out like those type of thoughts, but you know, the idea of uh, just floating around in water wherever doesn't suit me. You, you really won't even find me on a boat. I don't care if somebody's putting me on a hundred million dollar yacht. Um, yeah, I'll go on a yacht, but make sure that the yacht is still roped <laughs> to the dock. Or if we do go out, Make sure that I can at least swim back to land if I got to get off of this yacht real quick. But yeah, don't be putting me out in the middle of nowhere. We're going to leave that up to the fishermen. They can go out to the heavy seas. Once again, Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Enjoy this episode. We will be uploading this uh, to our distribution company. It will be available today on Spotify, Amazon Music, Amazon Audible, and iHeartRadio and many more. Um, on those podcast channels. Great, great, great. The great Nick Itkin. What a blessing. Ending my year of Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco of 2022 and looking forward to having him on again in 2023. Uh, all things Power 98.5, you can contact my team at power98.5radio at gmail.com or contact at power985.com. And like I told you before, if we are not the first and only, or maybe the only um, in its rarity, I don't think we're the only, uh, there may be other radio stations that do this. Uh, we are operational 24 uh, seven. So 
definitely head on over to power985.com or on the iOS or Android app. You can click that bottom right hand icon and send us a message at any time. And depending on the hours and uh, location of where myself and my team are at, we will get back to you right away. And actually, can we check? Do we have anything in the queue or anything at all? Let's double check. Nope, nothing to add. All right. Uh, thank you again to everyone. Enjoy your day. And thank you for being with us. And remember, Power 98.5 is your premier destination for all things news, sports, entertainment, music, and more. A commercial-free station created for the people. Have a great day. Happy holidays and happy new year. Us on your socials and let's connect.